welcome to EZLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be doing the topic acid bases and salts and today we are going to be looking at solubility curves but now the practical bit of it. So we're going to look at the steps, what are the things that we look out for when we are doing our graph work especially for solubility and where are the marking points and then we are going to do one question together. So the scale must a uh, chosen should be able to accommodate all the points in the table and it should have consistent uh, scale intervals. So it is important that your your scale should be having intervals and then also should feel at least uh, most of the, the graph, not so small and not big. And then uh, labeling units are not necessary for example if you have been asked time you don't need to put a specific time like in seconds or in minute but if you have been given then it's okay otherwise you will be penalized if you give the wrong units so if you have to put the units make sure they're in the correct units and then the scale should not be big in, should be big enough it should cover at least a half of the grid so just like I've said, it shouldn't be too small, it shouldn't be too big, just enough, at least a half of the of the grid that you have been provided with. You'll be provided with a grid, um, put big boxes on the vertical and also horizontal axes. So avoid omitting zero at the origin, it's safer that way. If it's possible to put the zero at the origin, please do so. It makes your work easier and it's avoids like a lot of errors. Points should be plotted uh, intact as they appear on the table. So do not change any points to fit to your needs. If a point is not falling on the curve, that's okay because we are drawing the best fit curve. But if you have been given points, plot all of them because also points are actually counted the ones that you yeah, that have been plotted. And then uh, the curve should also the curve should pass through the initial point as this is as this was the first experiment done along uh, and a lot of purity and then use broken lines when reading from the graph so sometimes you ask a question to maybe say the temperature or the solubility at a certain temperature so you you miss the mark if you do not show on the graph showing on the graph also is a marking point so whenever you mention a certain value from the graph you need to prove that that's where you got it so that's where um plotting using uh dotted lights to show like your values from the graph then temperature graphs are normally broken but not the change in temperature graphs so for example you have been given this question i want us to do it together step by step the table below shows the solubilities of potassium sulfate, potassium chloride at different temperatures. So you have to sort potassium sulfate and potassium chloride. You can see the temperatures and degrees Celsius and the masses per 100 grams. So you've been told the first question is to do the solubility curve for both sorts on the same axis. So that is what you are going to draw first. I remember we said we choose a, a correct scale. A correct scale will enable us to be able to do that. So the temperature will be at the bottom. So let's label our work. So temperature. And then on the y-axis, we will have solubility. So let's label that as well. So let's correct that a bit. Let it put, uh, let us put another in the edge that we can leave some space for the values uh, in grams per 100 gram water. So you can see I'm confident in putting down the units because they've already been given. So you can do so if they've already been given. So let's choose the scale. So you start with zero. Uh, this will be 10, 
So let me make that correction. This will be 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100 degrees Celsius. And then on the uh, y axis, we will have, um, we can pick 55 five because we only need 100 uh, up to, we only need up to the highest is 53, so we can pick smaller. So we can start with 5 grams, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 grams, 35, uh, 40, 45, uh, 50, 55, and 60. We actually need up to 53, so that's okay. So you notice in my scale, um, every one, two boxes or one centimeter represent uh, five grams in the y axis, in the x axis, one centimeter represent 10 degrees Celsius. So you'll be able to work it out that way. So the first point, I will, I will not draw the lines, uh, but you can see it's very clear on the edge. You can go ahead and put with a pencil uh, in your graph paper. So let's start plotting. So note that um, for every small square on the mass of the the solubility in you know, in hundred, every small square represents zero point six two five, and then for the temperature, every small square represents uh, two point five degrees Celsius. So we work with that and see, but to notice like for the temperatures is going to be easier because they are full numbers. So let's start with potassium sulfate. Let's plot the, the points. So the first point, you start with potassium sulfate is at zero degrees uh, Celsius and eight uh, degrees. So I'm going to use different colors for potassium sulfate and potassium chloride. So I will use black for the potassium sulfate so that that's so at zero degrees. So this is five. So this here is going to be 2.5. So it's 7.5. So eight is going to be here. So this is where the first point is. And then at 20 degrees Celsius, uh, let's correct that one. So this one was at zero degrees Celsius, eight grams. So next is 20 degrees Celsius at 10. So it's here, and then at 40 degrees Celsius, the mass is at 14. So this is here, it's 12.5. Uh, uh, this is going to be 13, so it needs to be close to 15. Uh, so it's going to be here. So you can make yours as accurate as possible. You can see there's a challenge because of the small size, but either way you can see the curve is coming up. And then um, at 60 degrees Celsius, we need 17.5. That's easy because it's, uh, it's going to be here. So this is uh, 17.5. And then at 80 degrees Celsius, uh, it's going to be at 20. 80, it's at 20. And then 100 is going to be at 22. So 22, so this is 20. This is 22.5, so you pick in between. So you can see how our, our curve looks like. So we'll try to join the curves uh, yours should be much better than mine so let's join the curve so it's going to uh, hmm. yours should be a bit smoother sure it's smooth yes but something like that 
So we go for potassium chlorate. So the first value is 3 grams at 0 degrees Celsius. So this is 2.5. So 3 is going to be around here. And then uh, 5 grams at 20. So 5 grams is here. And then 15.5 at 40 degrees Celsius. So 15. 0.5 let's put it here um 15 and then at 60 degrees celsius is 24 so we we'll go to 20 this is 22.5 so 24 must be here and then at 80 degrees celsius is at 38 so 35, 37, so 38 is around here. And then at 100 degrees Celsius, it's 53. So 50, this is 52. So 53 is going to be around here. So we also join that curve. So you can join yours slowly, but you can see the curve as it goes. So next we label. So this is going to be for potassium sulfate. And this is for potassium chloride. Try to label where it's not interfering with your working. So we have uh, drawn. Next, uh, we now use the graph to calculate a solution of potassium sulfate contains 20 grams of salt dissolved in 100 grams. So we are starting with 20 grams of a salt. This solution is allowed to cool to 25 degrees Celsius. At what temperatures will crystals first appear? So we need to identify at 25 degrees Celsius how much it dissolves. So you come to potassium sulfate at 25 degrees Celsius. So this is where 25 uh, degrees Celsius is. So you come here and you go up, 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 up until where it touches the graph. And then you go on the y-axis. So this is around, this is 10. 10.625 then this become 11 11.25 so at uh, 25 degrees celsius it dissolves 11.25 grams but we it contained 20 so anything in this 20 grams of the source that we are going to use only 11.25 is going to dissolve so we are going to subtract, so that is 20 grams minus 11.25, which will give us 8.75 grams. So what mass of crystals will be present at 25? Uh, so we have answered that question. Or oh, the first question is at what temperature will crystals first appear? So... Um, at 100 degrees Celsius. A solution of potassium sulfate contains 20 grams of the salt dissolved at 100 grams of water. At 100 degrees Celsius, this solution is allowed to cool to 25 degrees Celsius. So the crystals will start to appear at, you can tell from the graph that at 100 degrees Celsius, potassium sulfate dissolves 20 grams from the graph. So as we Cool the solution, it means that temperatures below 100. Remember, we started with 20 grams. So, the moment you start cooling, remember it can only maximally dissolve 20. So, any temperatures below 100, it starts to crystallize. So, which of the two, two salts is more soluble? 
uh, 30 degrees Celsius. So we are going to go where 30 degrees Celsius. We extrapolate. So this one goes this way. And then this other one goes this way. You can see we are always showing our values on the graph. We don't just mention. So you can see for potassium sulfate it's soluble at 30 degrees celsius it's around 17.5 grams of salt and then for potassium chlorate at 30 degrees celsius it's around 10. so you can see potassium sulfate has a higher solubility uh, than potassium chlorate at 30 degrees Celsius. So that answers the question. Determine the concentration of potassium sulfate in moles per liter when the solubility of the two salts are the same. So what you are going to do for this question uh, to calculate now the concentration is you need to be able to identify the mass of potassium sulfate because we need for us to get the moles, we need mass. So the mass of potassium sulfate, uh, let's see if we can do it on the graph so that you can see the workings. So from the solubility, we know that mass, we are going to get the mass of potassium sulfate in 100 grams of uh, 100 centimeters cubed by looking at the where the specific location where the two salts are this are the same so you take that mass or the solubility at that point that is around this is uh 14 uh so when they are the same it's 14 grams per 100 grams of water i'll take 14 you can check yours correctly so that's where they are the same so after that, that means that if we were to look at the mass now of potassium uh, sulfate in a litre, we would say if 14 grams uh, dissolve in 100 centimetres cube, we get this from the 100 grams, what about in 1,000 centimetres cube, which will give us 14 times 1,000 over 100 which is the same as 140 grams. This is per liter. And we already, we can be able to get the molecular mass per liter. So molecular mass of potassium sulfate is going to, remember potassium sulfate is written like this, which is going to be 39 times two uh, plus 32 plus 16 times four which will give us 174. So molarity, these are the moles per liter, will be the mass per liter, which is 140 over 174, which gives us 0 0.8. So that's how you do that calculation. I hope you have been able to understand how we plotted the graph. You can do more questions. Check out for more questions in the website. I'll see you in the next lesson.